Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a smoke portrait effect like this in Adobe Photoshop. So here is the first example, and if I zoom in it a little, you can see more detail in the face. To create this composition, I'm simply going to manipulate a portrait of a face by using some Photoshop filters and then bring in some smoke textures to add to the effect. Let's look at the next example. This time I have used a different colour effect and kept some of the detail and highlights on the shoulders here. In this tutorial I'm also going to be using the smudge tool and a series of masks to blend the image together. So here is my last example and this is the version we are going to be creating in this tutorial. If you wish to take a closer look at these examples and the layers within the Photoshop documents, you can download the files. The links are in the description. Okay, so with that said, let's get into it. So to begin, you are going to need a subject. For this example, I'm going to use this image of Natalie Portman, which I acquired from a simple Google search. So once you have your image, you want to open it up in Photoshop. And if you are opening the image for the first time, you will have this lock icon applied in your layers panel. First, I'm going to double click on the layer and click OK, and this will release the lock. So next, I'm going to change the canvas size to get a nice area to work with. I'm going to come to Image, Canvas Size, and change the width to 2000 pixels and the height to 1900 pixels, and click OK. So now I have a nice canvas size to work on. At this point, I'm going to change the image to grayscale. Now, my image might already appear to be grayscale, but yours might not. So at this stage, come to Image, Mode, and change this to grayscale. Next, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to press and hold Command Shift and press N on the keyboard and name this layer to Background and click OK. Then I'm going to change my foreground colour to black and with the paint bucket tool simply click and fill the entire layer in black. So on my layers panel I'm going to click and drag the new background layer below my image layer like so. Next I'm going to select my image layer and now I'm going to remove the background and isolate the face. All I want at this stage is the detail in the face. So I'm going to select my eraser tool from the menu or simply press E on the keyboard. I'm going to select the feathered brush and make sure my opacity is set to 100% in the control panel here in the top. Now I'm going to start to delete the hair area and parts of the image I don't want. Don't worry about using a mask here, we don't need to be too precious about this. Just make sure not to remove any of the face. Okay, so soon you should end up with something that looks like this. Once you're happy with your image, next I'm going to press Command I on the keyboard and this is going to invert the image. So at this stage, you might want to press E again to bring up the eraser tool and remove parts of the image you don't want, just to smooth it off like so. So with this layer selected, in the layers panel, I'm going to right click and duplicate this layer. So with this new layer above, I'm going to press Command I to invert this image back to normal. With this layer selected, I'm going to come to the bottom of the layers panel and click the add layer mask icon. Upon click, I can see a new white layer mask thumbnail on the layer. For those new to masking, whatever is black is hidden and whatever is white is revealed. So currently the mask is white, so I can see the layer. Now, if I select the mask layer and press Command I to invert, the white mask will change to black and now I cannot see my layer anymore. So this has essentially masked away the entire layer. I'm going to zoom into the eyes here for a second because what I'm going to do next is select the brush tool from the menu and I'm going to toggle the size so it's roughly the same size as the eyeball here. Then in the menu, I'm going to change the foreground color to white, make sure my opacity is set to around 50%, and with the mask layer still selected, I'm going to start to click on the eyeball. So I'm adding white to the mask layer, and this is now going to reveal part of the layer back. So what I'm doing here is masking back in parts of the eyes. 
If I toggle the visibility of this layer, we can see the eyes are looking rather flat. So I have maintained the eyes like this to keep the detail. So once you have something that looks like this, in the Layers panel, I'm going to select the top layer. I'm going to press and hold Shift and select the layer below. So now I have them both selected. I'm going to press Command E to merge these two layers together. And I'm going to rename this new single layer to Smoke Base. Next, I'm going to duplicate this layer by right clicking and selecting Duplicate. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this layer to Smoke Detail. OK, so now it's time to apply some filters. So the first filter I'm going to add is to the Smoke Detail layer. With the layer selected, I'm going to come to Filter, scroll down to Stylize, and select Glowing Edges. So this effect is going to give us the detail in the face. And what I like about this effect is that it's going to create some lines and highlights and create some smoke ripples. So I'm going to tweak the edge width, edge brightness and smoothness until I get something I am happy with. Remember, we are trying to make it look more smoke-like here, so try and find a balance between the sharpness and the softness of the effect. Once you have something that you're happy with, click OK. And there is the effect. For now, I'm going to toggle the visibility of this layer to focus on the smoke base layer below. So with the smoke base layer selected, this time I'm going to come to Filter, scroll down to Brush Strokes and select Ascented Edges. So with this effect, I want to create a background smoke base. I want to make the detail a little less prominent and more cloudy. This layer is going to complement the smoke detail layer we just made. So I'm going to tweak the edge width, edge brightness and smoothness until I get something I'm happy with. And that's looking pretty cool, so I'm going to click OK. And there is the effect. I'm now going to change the opacity of this layer to about 60%, just to push it back a little. And then I'm going to toggle back in the visibility of the smoke detail layer above. Next, with the smoke detail layer selected, I'm going to come to the blending options up here in the top left and select screen. So this is now going to place the white highlights on top of the smoke base layer below. Nice. OK, so with the two layers prepared, I'm going to go ahead and add layer masks to each of these. So with the smoke detail layer selected, I'm going to come to the bottom of the layers panel and click the add layer mask icon. And there is the new mask thumbnail in the layer. Then I'm going to do the same for the smoke base layer. So now I have a layer mask applied to each layer. Right, so with the smoke base layer selected, I'm going to click on the mask thumbnail, change my foreground color to black, choose the brush tool, select a feathered brush, set my opacity to about 30% in the control panel, and I'm going to toggle my brush size accordingly, and I'm going to start to click on the mask to mask away the surrounding smoke area until I have a nice clean face area like so. Now, because my opacity is set to 30%, I can get a nice gradual blend. Once I'm happy with this, I'm going to select the mask thumbnail of the smoke detail layer. And again, I'm going to start to mask away some of the detail I don't wish to include. So I'm going to spend a little time masking away both the smoke base and the smoke detail layer. And soon I will have something that looks like this. So now I have isolated the face and I have a nice smoky vibe going on here. So next I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select both layers in the layers panel. First select the top layer, hold shift and click the layer below. And I'm just going to move these down slightly to give more room above, ready for the smoke. Okay, so now it's time to bring in the smoke textures. Now, there are many ways of drawing and creating smoke in Photoshop, but this could take a while, and there is nothing like the real thing. So I have acquired my textures from a royalty-free website called photogene.net. These images only cost me a couple of dollars, but you can easily find some smoke textures by doing a Google search. So I have my first smoke texture here. I don't need it all, so I'm just going to select the part I want, 
and I'm going to press Command C to copy. Then I'm going to press Command W to close the image. And in my new comp, I'm going to press Command V to paste. Before I do anything else, I'm going to apply a blending mode to this layer. And I'm going to choose the blending mode screen. Next, I'm going to press Command T and press and hold Shift and Alt on the keyboard and click and drag the top right pointer to scale the image up like so. Now, this part is down to your creative judgment and you might want to experiment with this. What I'm going to do now is position my smoke texture where I think it will work. So I'm not really feeling it at the moment, so I'm going to come to Edit, Transform and Flip Horizontal. I'm going to press Command T again to scale up and rotate. I'm going to place this nicely here against the jawline and perhaps rotate the image further. That's looking pretty cool. It's looking part of the face there. So I'm going to zoom in and now I have this awkward looking part of the smoke here and that's not looking very smooth. So now I'm going to use the smudge tool and apply a layer mask to blend this nicely into the face profile. So with the smudge tool selected, set the strength to about 30 up here in the control panel so it's not going to be too harsh. Toggle the brush size accordingly and in this instance I'm going to click and drag on the smoke layer and manipulate the smoke so it curves around the jaw like so. Now depending on your image you may not have to do this exactly but keep this technique in mind should you need to use it on other parts of your image. So once I'm happy with this I'm going to apply a layer mask to this layer. Just like earlier click on the layer, come to the bottom of the layers panel and click on the add layer mask icon. I'm going to press B to select the brush tool, make sure it's a feathered brush with the opacity set to around 30% and I'm going to click on the mask to mask away some of the smoke layer and blend it into the face like so. If I zoom out I can see the smoke edge is looking rather rather harsh up here so I'm going to toggle the brush size and click the mask to mask away the edge of the smoke to blend it out like so. So I'm going to open my next smoke sample, select the area I want, copy, I'm going to close the document and paste into my new document. Again I'm going to apply a screen blending mode to the layer and press Command T to activate free transform and scale up. I'm going to flip this image again and perhaps rotate slightly. Next I'm going to apply a mask layer and with the brush tool set to black click into the mask and mask away some of the harsh areas and feather out the smoke like so. So I'm going to open up my last sample, select the area I want, copy, close and paste into my new document. I'm going to apply the screen blending mode, scale up, position and rotate. Again I'm going to use the smudge tool to blend the smoke into the face profile then add a layer mask and use a black feathered brush to mask and blend the smoke. So soon you should have something that looks like this. As you can see the smoke is going off the edges of the canvas so I'm going to click the top layer, hold shift to select the bottom layer. With all the layers selected I'm going to press command T and I'm going to scale them down like so to nicely fit the composition within the canvas area. Nice. So now I'm happy with the composition. I'm going to spend a little time tweaking the layer masks on my smoke layers. What I want to get now is more depth in the smoke. So by selecting a smoke layer, I'm going to click on the mask thumbnail and with a black feathered brush and the opacity set to around 30%, I'm going to toggle the brush size accordingly. And I'm going to click into some of the smoke areas just to push back some of the detail and bring to the front some of the nice white streaks. Remember, black hides the layer and white reveals the layer. So if at any point you feel you have masked too much away, you can just change the foreground color to white to click and bring back in some of the smoke. And that's looking quite nice. Also, I'm going to make sure the smoke blends out nicely around the edges. 
So once you're happy with the smoke areas, I'm going to focus on the face area. With the smoke base layer, I'm going to tweak the mask layer and subtly remove some of the image, particularly in the forehead area where the smoke meets the face. Then I'm going to tweak the smoke details layer. I'm going to just feather some of the lines away just to reveal some nice highlights. Looking closely, I can see the ripples may look too sharp in some areas here. So I'm going to select the smudge tool, push up the brush size, make sure the strength is around 30% up here in the control panel. And I'm going to click and smudge the ripples ever so slightly, just to blur them a little to get a nice smoky effect. So soon you should have something that looks like this. Now we are almost finished. Next, in the layers panel, I'm going to select all the layers. I'm going to right click and duplicate. With all the new layers selected, I'm going to press Command E to merge them all together into a single layer. I'm going to call this layer Overlay. With this new flat layer, I'm going to apply a blending mode and I'm going to apply the blending mode of overlay and you can see that this has boosted the highlights in the smoke. If you think that is too much, simply toggle the opacity of the layer. In my case I'm going to set mine to around 20%. So that's how you can create a smoke effect in Adobe Photoshop. Now I could leave it like that or I could add some colour. To do this I'm going to create a new layer by pressing and holding Command Shift and pressing N and I'm going to name this layer to color. Now at this point it's important to change your image mode to RGB. So I'm going to come up to image, come down to mode and select RGB. Then I'm going to choose a foreground color. I'm going to go for a golden yellow color. Then I'm going to click the little arrow above to toggle the background color and I'm going to choose a pinkish red color. Once I have my color selected, I'm going to click and hold on the paint bucket tool and select the gradient tool. With this, I'm going to click in the bottom right corner and click and drag up to the top left corner. And now I have this nice gradient layer. With this new layer, I'm going to give this a blending mode of overlay and boom, there it is. Now, if you want to play with your color, you can press Command U to pull up your hue saturation options and toggle the hue to experiment with some alternative color effects. So that's it. That's one way you can create this effect in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, hit the like button on my Facebook page or come and add me as a friend. Always willing to chat to you guys and answer any questions. Don't forget, you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial. All links are in the description. If you guys have a go of this yourself, be sure to come and paste it up on my Facebook wall. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Well, that's it for another video brought to you by tastyshoots.com. Thanks for watching. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you next time.